to 11 o'clock. Welcome, everybody, to uh, Coffee with Column, to Coffee at 11. Uh, coffee with uh, my good friend, Ian Hannan. Uh, thank, you for, thank you for joining us, Ian, and thank you for joining us online, folks. So um, let me just introduce you briefly um, to Ian. Bear with me a second now. Uh, whoops, bear with me two seconds, I'm sorry. Wrong document. Ian Hannon of Activate Training and Consultancy. What's your business? Business to business training, sales and marketing, selling skills, uh, leadership and managing teams, effective workplace communication, customer service. They're the, they're the programs you run. In business for four years, three employees. Um, Ian has been in sales man and management positions over 20 years. When he started in sales at 23, he struggled for the first year. When the company was bought by an international group, he was sent by the new owners on an in-house sales training program, and it was transformational. Ian has had a passion for training ever since and always had a desire to work for a training business and help other people get better and more confident at what they do. He couldn't fight, find the right one, so in 2016, he started his own. I love it, I love it, I love it. Something nobody knows about Ian, he loves reading, but listens to books 10 times more than uh, he ever reads them, spends a lot of time in the car. And he says, there's a book that took him 10 years to read, never actually finished his biography of JFK, but he says, I listened to it in one day on a trip to Cork and back. Ian Hanna, pleasure having you on Coffee with Colin. Coffee with Colin. Nice to be here. And uh, over to you, my friend. Who is Ian Hannan behind the legend? I shouldn't have been so thorough in my, uh, in my details here there, Colin. You've given it all away now at this stage. So, uh, well, I'll, I'll, keep it, uh, I'll keep it brief. So, uh, firstly and most importantly, I'm, I'm a husband. I'm a father of uh, four kids. Uh, kids are 18, Kira's 18, Connor is 15, Dara is uh, 12, and Killian is, uh, is 9. I'm 45 for the record. <clears throat> so uh, that's the family. Uh, we live in Navan. I mentioned it's a lovely sunny day here in Navan. So we've been in Navan about 20 years, a little over. <clears throat> we were one of those um, people who uh, we, we would have loved to live in Dublin, uh, where we both grew up and uh, we just couldn't afford a house in Dublin at the time. So we, we looked around Navan was it and um, we've been here ever since so now we're, we're in our second home in Navin. We're, we're home this is home uh, absolutely as far as we're concerned anyway so um so that that's us um in terms of the the career things you mentioned there as well i've been in sales forever like that that's really who i am that's what i do and it's what i'm i think i'm that's what i'm most comfortable in and um when i started i didn't want to do anything else i never wanted to be you know a doctor or a a solicitor or uh, whatever so <clears throat> I thought well I go into business and, and I heard at the time that if you're in business you might as well be in sales I was told that's where all the money is so that that was kind of the, the road that I took down and my dad had been in business and been in sales for a long time so that was the route that I took and, and as you mentioned in the intro there um, I, I worked for a company it was an office supplies company we sold you know paper and paper clips and, and you name it and uh, I was in customer service I was desperate to get out on the road and I harassed them and harassed them and two years later they gave me a chance and um, I figured out uh, that I was brutal at it and uh, I, I, I really struggled I struggled for the first year <clears throat> and it, very naively I thought it'd be great at this thing and uh, and look at I wasn't but anyway I worked hard I did okay I think I did okay enough to not get fired uh, in the first year, and uh, it's not not really a compliment. But uh, but as you mentioned there as well, the, the company I worked for was bought out by a big international group, and they were huge into training and development and uh, that type of thing. So I, I was lucky. I was very very lucky. At the age of twenty three or whatever it was at the time, I, I was sent to the UK to their head office um, on a very very comprehensive training program, <clears throat> and uh, like they threw an awful lot of stuff at us. But I'd had a year of struggling, and so I knew what I was looking for, and I knew what was going to make the difference, let's say. And so I probably picked five or six critical things for me that would make all the difference. And, and real simple stuff, I won't go into all that detail now, but real, real simple stuff in terms of selling and how to get in front of people and how, just how to persuade people to, to say, okay, yeah, sure, we'll give it a try, as opposed to, we'll look at it, sounds good, we'll, we'll come back to you, uh, which really means you'll never hear from me again. And I'll be in meetings for the rest, uh, the rest of my life whenever you're trying to ring me. So that's what I did. <clears throat> and for the next year, uh, it, it kind of took off and I did well. And, and I became one of the top performing uh, salespeople uh, and all of that. And, and it was great. And then they made me sales manager. 
and uh, and I went right back to not having a clue what I was doing all over again. So that's just the way it is, it's just the way we learn. And so I suppose that was my start, <clears throat> uh, but it was also the beginning of a bit of a, a bit of a grow, really, a bit of a love for for training. And and as you mentioned, I I've always I've always been on the lookout for a training company to uh, to, to go work with because I just really felt this is a thing for me, and, and I just never found the right place. But you know, I moved on. I spent uh, ten years in that company altogether, <clears throat> five years as sales manager. We built up uh, quite a big team, and um, and it was good. It was a great ten years, and, and that was uh, the way it was. So I moved on. Uh, I moved on to a few different companies, mostly as sales manager or, or you know management positions, uh, that type of thing. 2009, I decided that I would do an MBA, go back to college. I put it off for a number of years, could never afford it. There was always a reason not to do it. Uh, I decided to do it. And, and around the same time or within a few months, uh, the, the job I was working in at the time uh, was made redundant. I prefer to say the job was made redundant rather than I was made redundant. But anyway, maybe that's an ego thing. But the job, the position was made redundant. So I found myself in a situation where I was not working, I was studying, uh, and I was looking for the next thing. <clears throat> and a uh, mate of mine and myself on the MBA course decided that we would do something together. And so the long and short of that is we, we bought a Subway uh, family. <coughs> and so um, kind of a natural fit, we, we both liked Subway, uh, and, and we did lots of research and all the rest, but then we thought, this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be good. So we bought uh, a store that had closed down uh, Dublin City and, and we felt that we could maybe do a better job and breathe life back into it and so on. And so I joined that, uh, we bought the business and because of my situation, I, I worked there full time. And so I worked there full time for two years and man, it was tough. Um, you know, starting a business in 2009 in Ireland, okay, we all know uh, about that. It was really, really tough. Uh, in, in my optimistic nature, I learned lots of things in, in that business, lots of what not to do next time round and, and, and all the rest of it. But it was tough because, you know, what I found was I was always the last person to get paid. And when you run a business, especially a business with staff and a premises and all the rest, there seems to be a queue of people just looking for money from you, you know? So the landlord's looking for money and the ESB is looking for money and the, the rates and, and everything else. And we'd seven part-time staff and everyone had to get paid. And I got paid if there was anything left. And sometimes there wasn't anything left, you know? And that's just the way it was. That's just kind of the reality of it. And it was very much a cash business. So I couldn't magic the money out and over, you know? So anyway, between one thing and the other, I, I worked in it full time until 2011. Uh, decided in 2011, <clears throat> I had to go and do something else. We big plans, we just figured out those plans weren't gonna to come to fruition. So I decided I, I would go back into the, uh, the world of working for other people um, and kind of see how that, uh, see how that went. So I, it's just something I needed to do. That's what I did. We took on a manager uh, who did an infinitely better job than I had ever done running the store, <clears throat> did lots of things that I, I hadn't done and so on. So that kind of worked out really well. And we owned the store until, 2016 we, we sold it in 2016 and, and that was kind of the end of that so lots of lessons out of that um, I wow. it, I ended up in 2011 uh, I, I took an interim position for a few months it went on for for almost a year which was great and, and then a couple of more positions came after that something quite significant happened in, in our family in, in 2011 towards the end of 2011 uh, where my wife Breed after a year our, our youngest child uh, Killian was a year old and Breed was diagnosed with, with MS, with uh, multiple sclerosis. And <clears throat> what's significant about that, apart from the obvious, is, is that there's lots of different types of MS and, and, the, and there's lots of people have MS. And, and you walk down the street, not walking down the street these days, but you know, typically you'll, you'll pass by people, lots of people have it. Um, and, and they're not showing any signs perhaps. And Breed has a particularly bad strain of it. That's just the way it is. It's, it's progressive as opposed to relaxing, remitting. So really what that means is it doesn't come and go, it's there all the time. And, and very gradually down the years, just gets a little bit worse, a little bit worse. So from a mobility point of view, uh, we spoke to that and, and lots of other, other things. Um, it's amazing what you adapt to and, and uh, what becomes the, the new normal, I think is the phrase that they use. So that just became part of our lives and kind of part of our story, you know? And so wow. career-wise from 2011, 
uh, until if I may, yeah. If I may just come in. Uh, firstly, thank you very much for for sharing so openly. Sure. Uh, there's never any there's never any pressure on any guest to do so, but uh, those that feel the uh, that it's the right thing to do, uh, I think I, on behalf of everybody on the call, welcomes it because it shows the, the real person behind uh, the, the camera, if you like. So thank you for that, Ian, and we wish it, you and Breed all the very best uh, in the journey ahead. Some, some journey up to that point, and let's, if we can, get into activate training and consultancy. So are we at the point in your story where that's just about to kick off? Because yeah. I figure Just out about, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'd love about. to get to, how was it before COVID-19? That's the next little section I'd like you to cover, if I may. Yeah, for sure. And, and just to, to mention, I suppose, the beginnings of the business and where it came about. Um, between 2011 and 2016, I, I worked in a couple of different positions. I love cars. I'm a car nut. And so I, I went into car leasing and things like that. <clears throat> and I worked with Audi for a while, which was great. It was lovely. And, and during that time, <clears throat> I got a phone call out of the blue. It was one of these kind of defining moments, a phone call out of the blue from a lady I'd worked with a number of years ago, uh, a number of years previously. Um, looking, could I do some sales training for their team? Understanding I was working full time and so on. So I started doing something with them, it became a little bit bigger. And really that, uh, that led me to think, I think I could have something here. I think there could be a demand out there. And, and ultimately this is what I, I love to do. And so um, that was kind of a defining moment. Um, I, I was doing that part time. I, you know, you conversations with people which lead to other people saying, oh, I didn't know you did that. Uh, maybe you'd come and have a chat with my sales director or my boss or whatever. <clears throat> and so I just thought, okay, we, we could have something here. So the end of 2015, beginning of 2016, I decided this is what I'm going to do. And so the start for me was, uh, gave back my, my lovely Audi company car and all that went with it. And, and it was me, my laptop and my mobile phone. And then I started at the beginning of February, 2016, and I started ringing companies and cold call it, you might call it. And, um, but that's what I've always done. And I started talking to companies about sales training and their sales teams and what's missing, what they'd like to improve in and so on. And, and I started selling a day here and two days there and, and you know, it, it became something. Uh, but very quickly, maybe three or four months into that, different conversations started happening about, well, do you do this? And you do this and of course the answer is always yes and, and two significant things were look <clears throat> we we have a group of managers the group of people in our business who we promoted we might have taken our best customer service person and made them supervisor or we've taken our best salesperson and we made them sales manager or whatever it happens to be we've taken our best forklift driver and all of a sudden he's team leader of the forklift driving team <clears throat> and, and we assume that because you were good at this thing you were doing before surely you'd be good at leading a team of people or managing people and so on. And we all know that's not always the case. In fact, a lot of the time, it's absolutely not the case, a whole different set of skills. So I started being asked, do you have anything that can support newer managers? So we created something. And, and the other question was, do you do anything around either customer service or team building? How we communicate with each other in the business, how different teams communicate with each other in the business and how we can work better together and so on. And, and so, okay, the answer again is yes, and we, we created something there. And so it ended up that sales, which was the foundation of the business, became a small portion of what, we, what we've what we done. And, and maybe if I put a number on it, it's probably about 25% of what we've done. I took the, the word sales out of the business, uh, out of the business name. So it was Activate Sales Training, and we became Activate Training and Consultancy. consultancy. So um, just by nature of, of uh, the percentage of what we do. So probably half of what we do is working with a mixture of either newer managers at, at that level, uh, maybe within their first few years of managing teams and so on. Uh, but also we figured out that, you know, more experienced managers still need the same level of support and probably haven't got it and so on. So we do quite a bit of work at that, at that level as well. And um, o over the, the last number of years, we've kind of slowly built the team. Um, there are three of us uh, at the moment, and uh, myself, Marie, and Tina, and uh, with a view to adding a couple of people onto that list, and uh, both in terms of training and selling and so on. And that kind of leads us up to probably a few weeks ago, Colin. I love it. I, I will, press pause I will, right there. I was just, uh, I was just 
listening to your language, your positive language, and uh, it's this is what we do, and we do this, and we do that. A couple of things that came to mind, uh, and I see Eamon Smith popped a little note in, man on the train alert coming when <laughs> meeting that individual somewhere who said, you should come and meet somebody. Yeah. Uh, you know, man on tra the train has been a very important part of my journey, uh, and I believe in it absolutely. Uh, but you've exhibited two traits, always the two traits that I believe must be there for you to meet your man on the train moment. And one is you're first and foremost out there doing your thing. Yeah. None of the people ever knocked on the hall door in Navin and said, Ian, where were you all our lives? Not right, yeah? Absolutely. They're still waiting. You're, you're a master of that. will stop waiting. And then the second thing is uh, you're, you're of, of a servant mentality. And when they ask, can you, the answer is yes. And you've no idea how. Yeah. Uh, so well, you Google it and you'll figure it out and then you deliver it stays. Congratulations. But I love and, and you're right. And, and there's been a, a, quite a bit of that. And I, I, I'll add to that, Colin, because I think what's important is when I got that phone call, in fact, it was a message to, to ring this lady and I recognized the name and I said, there, there could only be one of these people, surely. And it was. But when I got that phone call or that message, <clears throat> um, that was kind of the start of it all. I, I remember thinking if this had been five years ago, I wonder would I have said yes. And I don't think, I'm not sure, but anyway, the fact of the matter was, it was just, a, it was the right time, the right call at the right time. And for me, it was, hey, sure, let's just go and, and see what this looks like. And, and the other thing, just to pick up on that as well, is absolutely, you get asked, look, yes, we need to do some sales training or whatever, but do you do this? And of course, the answer is always yes, and you'll figure it out. And I know that's maybe a Richard Branson quote in there somewhere, say, yeah, uh, we'll figure out the details later. Um, if I hadn't, yeah. like who knows, you know, but, but, but I did. You did. You did. One more observation before we go into where are we now, uh, and that is that, uh, interestingly, you changed the name of the business from Activate Sales Training because of what you saw in the marketplace. Had you stuck to sales only, uh, you'd only be doing 25% of what you were doing based on what you told us, because sales training ends up being a quarter of your overall. Very yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah. To expand. Happy days. Okay. All about opportunities, I suppose, yeah. That, that's okay, it. young man, that brings us up to about two weeks ago and everything's going swimmingly and you're looking into the future and you're thinking life couldn't be better and then all of a sudden uh, COVID hits. Where are you now? So I, I'm not sure what I said, life couldn't be better. You know, we, we, were, uh, we were still working hard and, and we were certainly on a journey and, and a lot of what I was doing over the last while was still figuring out how are we going to get there and so on. But hey, we were on a path at least. And um, I, I suppose, look, we were all in the same boat to some degree. Things come out of nowhere. And um, given you know what, what I shared in terms of breed and so on, the one thing I've learned down the years is that certain things are, are you know, everything in perspective, in other words, everything in perspective. So there are certain things that, Look, as long as we're all okay, you know, things will happen and, and you'll get through it. And so it, it just tends to be the type of view that I tend to take. I, I will always, I use the word okay with myself an awful lot. What I mean by that is, right, we're in this situation and, and maybe there's a bit of panic around the place and there's maybe, oh my God, I didn't see this coming and, and all of that. And then I have to stop myself and say, okay, so where are we? What's the worst case scenario here? Uh, and let's make some sort of a plan around the worst case scenario here. And, um, and if we can manage around the worst case scenario here, and if it does become the worst case scenario, the worst case scenario in our case was everyone is postponing training. Nothing is going to happen. And we don't know when the end of that is going to be. Okay, so if that's where we are, then, then what do we do next? If it doesn't come to that fine, then, then we're not quite as bad as that. But that's where we are. What do we do next? And so, you know, I suppose I allow myself a couple of minutes of, wow, this ain't good. But then that okay moment has to kick in because uh, that's what you have to do. So it's like, okay, this is where we are. What do we do next? And, and you just have to decide what to do next. And, and so for us, the decision was, well, if there's going to be no training, and it looks like there's going to be no training for the next few months, and, and there really isn't effectively a job for all of us right now, then, then we have to manage around that. And, and that's very much what we've done. So um, the, the two girls who, who work with me have taken a back step away for, we've decided between us six weeks and, and we'll see what that looks like and we'll 
you know, we're keeping in touch, obviously, and we'll, we'll see where that goes. Um, and so what am I doing? Like, I'm doing lots of things, but one of the things that I'm doing is, you know, we have a lot of clients out there that we do quite a bit of work with on a regular basis. We, we have a lot of clients that you know, were new clients and had, you know, dates booked in for training, different types of training. Um, and we have a lot of clients who were, or potential clients who were, were talking to and were about to book in dates for training. And so it's managing all of that right now. And so at the moment, what I'm spending a lot of time doing is, is keeping in touch with people um, and figuring out in the short term, informally, what can I do to help? And, and that could be a bit of advice. It could be how do you manage your sales teams remotely? It could be how do I keep in touch with my customers remotely? It could be all of those sort of things. Or it could be, oh my God, I need someone to talk to because I don't know what's going on and everyone is depending on me and sometimes we need to vent. And so if I become that person for, for you or whatever, then, then great. So at the moment, I'm, I'm doing quite a bit of that, keeping in touch with people. I'm also trying to form a view in, in the short term of what will people need, um, perhaps from a training or support perspective when we come out of this thing, which of course we will, and it's only a matter of time. And so what I'm trying to, to figure out um, is what's that gonna look like? What, what sort of help and support that people need? And, and then start putting a bit of that together and so on for when the time is right. Fantastic. Ian, um, I'm gonna ask you a question, but uh, your video has frozen, unfortunately. Oh, okay. So now let me ask you this question and then we might get you, with everybody else's permission, might get you to log off and come back into the meeting. That might be set because I'm not in charge of your video at my end, I'm afraid. Um, but uh, just going back to this uh, six weeks hiatus that you've spoken of with the, the ladies, right? First of all, really good decision. When the shutter came down on the planet, we all had to pull the shutter down and stop yeah. extending money that really isn't going to come in. Second thing that I'm really impressed with, Ian, is uh, not at all surprised, but really impressed, is you're, you've gone into servant mode. You've gone into not sales mode, but into looking out for the people who were clients, who were prospects, and just offering them your help, not on the clock, just making sure, lads, you're okay. If you need anything, you know where I am. And I think that's a classic Ian Hannon. Um, but I also think it's the right way to be in this really strange time that we're in. I'm going to comment on that and then we'll get you to reset. Yeah, I suppose uh, for me, you can still hear me at least, Scott. Me, yeah? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so I suppose for me, it, it's a matter of, there's a bit of a mantra that I have, um, which is just, you know, look at the things you're, you're in control of. Uh, I spend an awful lot of time talking to people in, in training programs, an awful lot of time hearing people talking about um, things that they just can't do anything about and what other people should do and, you know, what the government should do and if only this and if only that and, and all of that. And um, I find uh, my advancing years, I've, I've less and less patience for that kind of conversation with people. So I'm always trying to steer the conversation back to, sure, I understand that. I understand the world would be a better place if, if this person did this or, or if that person, whatever, or if your boss did this, or, or if those people in that team, um, you know, work different or, or had a different approach or whatever. You can't control that. So what can you do? So I'm always trying to bring the conversation back to, well, what can you do? And sometimes that's, that comes across as quite blunt because I, I quite often use the phrase with people, well, what are you going to do about it? You know, so we can all have a, maybe a bit of a moan, a bit of a vent, a bit of a complain, uh, and so on but the question has to keep coming back to so what are you going to do about it and yeah. again i suppose now i'm just saying that to myself okay well here we are well what are you going to do about it so what can i do what am i in control of well i'm in control of how maybe proactive i can be i'm in control of i can pick up the phone to people i i can send emails to people i can you know keep in touch with people and i can offer a bit of help and support can do an awful lot else right now you know, people, are, people aren't in a place to do anything else right now. That's what I can do. So mm. I just figured out, well, you know, if that will help people in the short term, it'll help us all in the longer term. And, okay. and is this for the longer term? Of course it is. You know, no, nothing is short term. Like three months, four months, a blip in the ocean when you think right. of it. So I suppose what I'm doing is I'm doing, uh, you know, whatever I can do right now. Um, and when things come back to life, and as I said, of course, they will, uh, then we'll be in a better place. But that's what I can do right now, so that's what I'm doing right now. Well done. I, I think that's right. I think whatever we can do, we should do. 
Simple as. Um, Ian, folks, are you okay? Thumbs up. Are you okay if we ask Ian to reset? Yeah, Ian, the, 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 the vote is in. Just if you wouldn't mind, if you can exit out of the meeting and come back in and all going well, your video will be back. Would you do that? I'll do that. I'll do that now and I'll try and get back online a ASAP. Yeah, we, we, we'll hang on here. We'll hang on here. I'll open up the, uh, the conversation to the others while we're waiting and you get back. Thanks for that. Who'd like to uh, who'd like to comment while Ian has gone away doing his thing? Sarah, two seconds. Sarah, good to see you and good to hear you. Yeah, I like the way he's thinking, really, um, and I think it's a, a very it's a it's a good way to survive and get through this. Is when he says figure out what you can do and who you can help because giving out about things doesn't help and giving about, out about who does what doesn't help. So focus on what you can do basically. And uh, it's, it's, it's the only way to go. Yeah, I would tend to agree. Um, I would tend to agree, Sarah, because as, as Ian himself said, we're not in charge of anything. Um, oh, I, the, the man himself might be back. We're not in charge of anything except what we can do ourselves. If it's, if it's beyond our control, it's beyond our control. Um, Ian, can you see us again? I can see you now. Can you? Sarah, thank, thank you for that. Thank okay. you for that. Uh, Eamon, I saw you with your hand up. Do you want a quick comment before we go back to... Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Eamon. One second. Thanks, Colin. Um, I just, just jump in. I love what Ian said about, and you know, even a reminder to me, I'll say this to myself often, but then you still forget. And what you just touched on with Sarah, what Ian says, as long as I'm okay, as long as I'm okay, things will happen and I'll get through it. That kind of co-creating. I don't have to know all the answers, but I need to keep, if we keep putting ourselves out there and keep taking one step at a time, things have a tendency to conspire, you know, man on the train and so on. But you need to be in the room. But I think the bottom line is to just to be okay, to mind yourself and things will happen. So I, I just, I love that. Fantastic. Thanks. Thank you, Eamon. And Thank I see uh, Patricia Machowska has just uh, said 100%. Uh, so we're all on the same track here. Uh, Ian Hannon, you're back. Uh, great to have you back. And, and come here, this is a live show. This is a first for me too. This thing started a week ago. Right? I'm making this stuff up as I go. Happy days. My favorite place to be. I see Princess Shelley laughing. But it's my favorite place to be. Uh, right, um, Ian Hannon, back to you. So I suppose, well, you know, have I anything else to add? Um, well, let, know, let, 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 let me I, ask you. I, let, let me ask ahead. you a question. So, forgive me. We, we we got out of flow. So, uh, thank you for your honesty so far today. Sure. Uh, uh, completely, uh, th that's the way you are. Um, but uh, so you you brought us through the journey. You brought us through your uh, challenging family circumstance that most people in the call wouldn't have known. So, thank you for that. that that's very honest. Sure. Uh, um, but uh, you brought us through how the business was rocking and rolling. It's fallen off a cliff. You've told us what you're doing now, what you can do now. And the next question I have for you, and then we'll, we'll look for a tip, and then we go to Q&A from the floor. But the next question is, uh, so we, the veil will lift. We will get past this. What do you see for Activate Training and Consultancy, please? So, uh, great question, and thanks for that. Um, so, I, I think for me... I, I, there's two answers to that. I, I think for me, the first answer is, is I have a very good idea uh, as to th this thing I feel will, at some stage, unpause itself. Okay, so we've a lot of things have been either postponed or decisions postponed and so on. But even in the last couple of days, I found myself having conversations with people where they're they're still planning. They're planning for three months time, four months time, or, or even a couple of months time. This is what they need the sort of support and so on that they need. So part of the answer is, is this going to be a three month pause? And then perhaps it'll take another three months to maybe ramp itself back up again. Um, I, I had a plan. I still have that plan. Uh, that plan is, is, it's called a growth plan and it's to help more people, find more people who need help. A lot of businesses out, out there who are kind of struggling with certain things, whether that's on the sales front, how to get themselves in front of more new clients, how to 
you know, support their teams better, how to work better as, as businesses, and all the things that we do. So my plan hasn't changed one iota, and um, I'll pick back up when the time is right where I left off, and, and I'll keep moving. My plan to, to grow the team, I'll pick that back up uh, when the time is right, and, and I'm, I'm hugely optimistic that it's, it's only a matter of time. Um, the, the other answer to that column, I think, is that I'm very open to the conversations I'm having at the moment with people, uh, and, and that I will continue to have with people over the coming whatever, month, two months, three months, in terms of what they're looking for and, and other, other ways that people need support and help and so on, either coming out of this or, or business that will be different or how we communicate with each other and look at us now uh, will be different and so on. On. So a lot of people using Zoom for the first time in the last uh, couple of weeks. So uh, I, I'm very open to listening to, which is why I'm having these conversations, listen to what support and what help do people need. It's, it's what I build my on. And so that's answer number two, I think, is I'll find out more over the next couple of months. So ask me again in a couple of months' time, and I'll probably give you a more thorough answer. That's probably the yeah. best answer I've got right now. But it, it's, it's full steam ahead, and, and no change here in terms of our plans for growth. Somebody else mentioned world domination, so I'm not quite sure about that, but um, we'll, we'll see. I love it, I love it. Uh, two, two quick things. Uh, firstly, you, 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 you mentioned the word unpause, and just as you did that, your video paused again. But we're not going to get you to go off the line this time. We're going to stick with it. Uh, so yeah. your, your video is paused, but your words of wisdom are just flowing beautifully. Thank you for that. Um, Thank you. You mentioned a three-month pause and then a possible three-month uh, ramp up. Really interesting to hear you say that. I'm on the I'm the chairman of the Lime Tree Theatre here in Limerick, and we had a board meeting yesterday, uh, and we we're in shutdown, and we're sort of expecting the same. That even if the veil is lifted in three months, people aren't really want to want to go out and sit beside strangers for three hours watching a show. And uh, I heard uh, that Riverdance, the show, has. Uh, has, if you like, decided to uh, suspend all shows until January of next year. So, you know, if that's indic indicative of what we're facing, it's prob probably realistic. Now, Riverdance uh, is, is a behemoth, so it's got huge costs associated with it to try and put on a show. So, you know, probably the best thing they could do is, is pull the shutter down and mothball it sure. when the time is right. Um, fabulous, fabulous stuff. Um, so, Ian Hannon, before we open it to the floor, um, uh, one tip, what would you recommend to anybody that you love that you say you should do this for the next few months to keep yourself on track, give yourself the best opportunity in hand, one tip? So you asked for one, and, and I'm going to give you two if, if that's okay, um, because they're very much linked, um, and, and I'll always try and get one more in anyway. So my first one is, is don't panic. That That's my first one. My first one is just don't panic. It's... Uh, you know, very, very easy to panic and so on. And, and I've heard lots of people saying how much time they give themselves to go into panic mode and so on. I, I tend to limit it to about two or three minutes before I just say, okay, well, well, what's next? So the first tip is don't panic. There's always an answer. There's always an answer. The second tip, um, or part B, is, and I'm probably repeating myself now, but focus on what you can control. And, and even now, if, so a month ago, there was only a certain amount of things we were in control of, really, when you think about it. Now there's even less. And so now I think it's even more important, 10 times as important, to, to figure out what those things are and, and just narrowly focus on those things. And don't worry about anything else, because you can't do anything about it anyway. So just focus on those things that you can actually do something about. Spend all your time, 80% of your time, on those things. And, and I would say, watch what happens. That's my tip. Lovely stuff, lovely stuff. Uh, one of my guests earlier in the week, Aoife Gaffney, uh, said that her husband always used the phrase, uh, let there be no panic. And if there is panic, let it be organized, right? And she had a similar approach to you, which is like, give yourself a few minutes to lose the plot, you know, and then that's it. You've had your opportunity back to reality. And then, as you say, uh, do something, focus on what you can do something about. Happy day. Yeah. Uh, uh, pleasure having you as my guest. You're not going anywhere for now because we've got a Q&A sure. from before. Hands up who would like to get involved here. Brian, two seconds. Allow me to unmute you. Uh, yes, Brian, welcome. Thank you, Colm. And uh, a great story there, Ian. I think uh, somewhere along the universe, we live parallel uh, 
uh, parallel lives because I have a timeline that's similar, uh, closely matches yours. Um, I would definitely like to speak to you. I was also on a um, on my own uh, own steam own business training and presenting and all that, which kind of just picked up momentum now in the last few months. And I've got plans that we're literally supposed to be rolling out now in March, April, May, and here we sit. So um, when it comes to building that team of yours, I would definitely put up my hand and I can, I'm sure I, we, I can add value and uh, win us right. So after this call, maybe we can hook up and, and maybe just get a, a phone call or something. That'll be great. I love it. C CVs flying back and forth here. <laughs> um, Sounds good, and and I'd be I'd be delighted first of all to have a chat, and, and maybe we can uh, we can set that up after the call. Um, first of all, so uh, for sure, I suppose I'll, I'll widen that to to anyone. Um, if again, like I said earlier on, for anyone, if I can help in any way, even if that's a bit of advice, or, or you want to have a bit of a vent, or a bit of a moan, even or whatever, uh, that's fine. But if there's anything I can help with in, in the short term uh, to anyone on the call or, or anyone at all, um, Hello. look, Lovely. I'd be more than happy to. Uh, to, to nice to one, that. Brian. That's nice one, Brian. Well, certainly, Brian, yeah. Uh, happy to have a chat and, and let's see where that goes. Yeah. And thank you for that. Thank you for that response, Ian. Uh, from memory, Sarah said just before the show that she should be giving away a free course. Just, you know, just put it out there. Like. <laughs> put it out. <laughs> all right. Absolutely. Let me have a think about what, well, okay, so I, I suppose rather than me having to think about, um, you know, what, what I could do, I, I'll open it up to, to everyone, not just right now, but even if, if, if everyone on this call wants to either send me an email, Ian at activate-training.com, or link in with me or whatever, and, and let me know how I could help um, over the coming couple of months, and then maybe we can, we can look at setting something up there. Nice one. Thank you very much, Ian. Repeat that email address, please. So it's ian at activate-training.com and then the website is activate-training.com and I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook and Instagram and all the other usual places. Great stuff. Thank you for that, Ian. Um, anybody got a question for Ian? Edwina, good morning. Two seconds, please. Edwina, welcome. Good morning, Colm. Good morning, Ian, and good morning, everybody. Um, good morning. Um, I'm really enjoying this. Um, I'm on week one of working from home and I'm on day four of coffee with Colm. So I'm really <laughs> enjoying it. That's you, that's you and me both, by the way. Yes. yes. There, what I've seen this week, um, there's a common theme here where all of your um, guests are have gone into servant mode. Um, which I'm really enjoying and you know taking a lot away from that and um, certainly enjoyed your take uh, this morning in uh, yesterday column you'd interviewed a lady Noelle Graham and um, one of the things I took away was about support needing support so my question to you Ian, is you know you are brilliant at supporting people where do you get your support um, or how do you where does that come from um, so Did you hear me okay? Have I lost have I lost Ian? Ian, we can't your your video is frozen. Questions, can we hear you now? Oh no. Oh no. He's gone. <laughs> okay. Oh dear. Uh, let me just, uh, folks, I, I apologize, this is obviously a live show. Let me just ring Ian and see where he's at, if that's okay. Uh, okay. Just two, two seconds, please. Are you there, Ian? Do you want to reset one more time? Okay, I'll have that set of the reset. Okay. So, Sarah, or sorry, Edwina, forgive me. He's, uh, he's gone off. He's going to come back on his phone. Okay. Bear with us just a moment. But a really good question. Anybody like to comment on, on that question? You want to get in on the conversation here? 
Here we go, Sarah, welcome again. Sarah? Yeah, I thought it was a really good question because it is, it is very important that we get rid of all that stuff that comes towards us. And if you don't, it could be catastrophic, basically. <laughs> Because you have to keep yourself going so that you can actually help others. So, I mean, I know with, with myself and my husband, whatever, we, we find a bit of a walk or um, even just talking to people who are close to us that will kind of give us a bit of um, a distraction, I suppose, to what we're doing, our little tips and what we can do to help ourselves. Um, it's very important to get rid, basically get rid of all that crap that we take in every day you know but yeah. walking is a very good is a very good way of, of of helping yourself if you don't have anyone with you at the time you know? yeah lovely thank, thank you for that so we got in back we go back to Ian if that's okay and perhaps uh, Sarah you are sorry forgive me Edwina Edwina you would oblige and just repeat the question for Ian Ian welcome back sorry about that thanks hi yeah. Edwina did you hear anything what I said or will I go back to the I, I very sketchy, so maybe just for peace, okay. yeah. So I had mentioned just, Colm had interviewed Noelle Craham yesterday and she made a, a really good comment in that support needs support. So my question to you is, uh, you've demonstrated through your, your interview and talk this morning about how supportive you are to everybody else. Um, who supports you? Where do you get your support from? Um, you know, what, what tips have you for us in terms of, of that? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. And I, look, one of the answers I'll give is, is the likes of Callum. You know, Callum and I have, have known each other since uh, very much there, thereabouts the start of my business. And He's gone again. Two seconds, two seconds. Yeah. He's on mute, that's all. Yeah, yeah, two seconds. Callum would be oh. one of those. You can still hear me okay there, can you? Yeah. yeah. You, you went on mute for a second. Okay, am I back? You're yeah. back. Okay, so um, yeah, there are various people that, that I would keep in touch with um, and, and that certainly uh, kind of keeps me going. Um, second answer I would give is like a lot of the clients that I deal with, you know, we've dealt with them for a long time now and, and they become more than just clients, they become friends. So there's very much a we're in this together um, sort of mentality. Uh, certainly with, with myself and my clients and, and it's about what we're doing, what they're going through, what I'm going through and so on. So when I talk to people, it's very much a two-way thing, if that makes sense as well. Um, and, and I think the third answer um, that I might give is that I'm just, I think, I have my moments and we all have our moments, but I, I think that by nature I'm just a very optimistic person. Um, and, and again, you know, not to be repeating uh, things from before, <clears throat> but, you know, you know, as long as everyone is okay, then what the hell, what does it matter? You know, and, and, and as long as that's okay and that's in place, everything else is just detail. Everything else is just, hey, we didn't see this happening to the business, so let's deal with it. Let, let's just go. And, and I'm okay with that too. Um, so I suppose, you know, there are people that I keep in touch with and, and part of what I'm doing in terms of my conversations with people. I mean, this is one of them, you know, yeah. I'm, I, the, the, you know, even just me sharing my story and what's going on with me and so on, like the, there's huge benefit to me in that and, and understanding everyone out there is going through something at the moment. Um, that's not just to say, well, it isn't just me, but I think there's, is there comfort in the fact that we're all in this together? Like there, there has to be. So even this and, and this experience for me is, is hugely important too. Fabulous. Thank you. Edwina, great question. And uh, are you happy with that answer? Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for that. Fabulous. And thanks for participating, Edwina. Um, just on that, Ian Hannan, over-delivering as ever, right? <laughs> Every question you've been asked, you say, I'll give you two answers. You ask me one question, I'll give you two answers. And, and just now you gave us three. So There you go. All right. One last question from the floor. Because I'm conscious time has run on and... Uh, has anybody got a question that they'd like to ask? Uh, if not, I, I have one, if I may, Ian. And it's one sure. that, uh, if I may touch on it, um, you shared very bravely earlier about a uh, breed situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's obviously a challenge that uh, your family has to live with. And um, 
and worked through. And uh, you also then went on to share the sort of timeline. Uh, and my understanding of it is Breed has had MS longer than you've had Activate training and consultancy as a business. So I'm right. just curious about the brave decision that you took to uh, step into self-employment. Uh, yeah, I, you know, it's a funny one for me because um, th there's a lot of people would say to me, it, w it was a very brave thing to do. And um, I don't think it was. Uh, for me, uh, at the time, 2016, it was a no-brainer. Um, I couldn't not do it. And I, I had to work for myself. Um, because for me, I... Um, I just kept feeling that I'm not working to my potential here. I'm not fulfilling my potential. And I think if I don't do this now, this will be probably my biggest regret. Um, so, you know, it, for me, it, it wasn't bravery. It, it wasn't any of that. It, it was just something I absolutely had to do. And, you know, like what was I risking at the end of the day? A few months salary or, or whatever. So I knew I'd make it work. I think for me, I knew I'd make it work. Um, I, I might have mentioned this to you in the past, Colin, but there's a friend of mine, uh, he's an accountant, so you know, perhaps more risk averse uh, by nature, but, um, and we were having a coffee, uh, as you do, a couple of months into the business, and, and he said to me, what's your plan B? Um, and I said, how do you mean? And he said, well, if this thing doesn't work out, uh, this whole business thing doesn't work out, how long are you going to give it um, before you figure out I just need to go and do something else? And I said, I, I don't have a plan B, and I'm never going to have a plan B. I'm going to make it work, because I know my nature down the years, if I have a plan B, I'll take it. It's the easy way out. So I just thought, burn the ships, Tim. I, I, you know, there is no plan B here, and I refuse to have a plan B. I, all in, <clears throat> so burn the boats. And I think that, that mindset for me, like it just worked. I'll make it work, and I'll know after a month Am I making enough calls? If I'm not, I'll make more calls. I'll figure it out, but, but I'll get there. So for me, it wasn't bravery, I don't think. It was just, I had to do it. Okay. Well, uh, congratulations. And I, by the way, I, I, I'm a fan of having no plan B, because with the plan B, it's the easy option. You know, Asher yeah. gave, it, gave it a lash, and it didn't work, so I'll just step over here. And typically, plan B won't work either for exactly the same uh, That's the it. Same. Um, but you know, congratulations on everything, on everything, Thank you. and for the person that you are, and the servant that you are, and the supporter that you are, and the business person that you are, and the husband and father that you are. And uh, look, um, I'd like to just say thank you, Ian, for taking the time to come on the call with us today. And Pleasure. Have coffee at eleven, um, folks. Can we just give Ian our usual uh, deaf community wave because we're all muted to say thank you very much indeed. That's that's the applause. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. I, I only hope, Colin, if I can add that when I froze earlier on, I froze on my good side uh, as opposed to anything else. Whatever. Watch the video afterwards. You decide. Uh, so, uh, folks, tomorrow, coffee at 11. Uh, Edwina, it'll be day five of five, okay? Uh, so, tomorrow, coffee at 11 is with another dear friend of mine. Um, and Bar Barbara Moynihan is her name. She has a business called On Your Feet. This is going to be a really interesting one. Barbara Moynihan, she has a business called On Your Feet where she and her people teach people how to make impactful presentations, whether online, uh, in a meeting, in front of a group, large or small. She's also president of the Professional Speaking Association uh, Ireland uh, division or chapter, whatever it is we call it. Uh, so she's a dear friend of mine, and she's going to come on tomorrow, and we're going to have a similar a chat over coffee so be here at 11 if you can ian hannon our pleasure thank you namaste great to be asked thanks a million bye good to speak to you all